Hi, I am Ofrim Chukudi and I welcome you to this interesting basic science class. Today, we'll be discussing the theme, science and development. And our topic of interest is crude oil and petrochemicals. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what crude oil and petrochemicals are. Describe the process of refining crude oil. State the uses of crude oil and petrochemicals. State the importance of crude oil to Nigeria. And finally, name some materials made from petrochemicals. Daily, we rely on one or more crude oil products. To cook, generate electricity and travel, we utilize one or more of these products. So can you think of any of these products made from crude oil? Do you know how they are made? Let's find out. First, let's discover what crude oil is. Crude oil, also known as petroleum, is a dark liquid inflammable substance found deep inside the earth or under the sea. It is commonly refined to several fuels you use daily through the process of fractional distillation. It is formed from living things, both plants and animals, that lived and died many years ago. Crude oil is found deep inside the earth. So for this reason, it requires special method and equipment before it can be discovered and be used. The process in which scientists discover crude oil or search for it is known as oil exploration. Scientists known as geophysicists are directly involved in the petroleum exploration process. They do this by sending signals underground and receive results from the signals in return. These signals help the geophysicists to suspect either the presence or absence of petroleum. On suspecting the presence of petroleum in a place, the geophysicists carry out a process known as oil drilling to confirm the presence of petroleum. Crude oil is present in many countries of the world, including such countries like Nigeria, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, USA, and Venezuela. In Nigeria particularly, crude oil can be found in the Niger Delta region, specifically River State and Bayasa State, as well as in offshore rigs located in the coastal regions. Now let's talk about how petroleum is refined. Before crude oil can be made useful for different uses, it has to be refined. Refining is a process by which crude oil is made useful by separating it into components. Refining of crude oil usually takes place in a factory called a refinery. To refine crude oil, first, it is extracted from oil wells and then subjected to the process of fractional distillation. Through this process of fractional distillation, different crude oil products can be obtained, such as gasoline foil, diesel, kerosene, and petrochemicals. Now let's talk more about fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is a process by which components of a liquid mixture are separated according to their different boiling points. Note, the boiling point of a liquid is the temperature at which the liquid changes into vapor. That means there is a change from the liquid state to a gaseous state. Fractional distillation is important because it is used to separate different crude oil products at their different boiling points. These products are now referred to as fractions. For example, this image shows the different fractions obtained during the process of fractional distillation. Note that each fraction corresponds to a unique type of petroleum product, depending on the temperature at which the fraction separates out of the crude oil mixture. For example, we can have the gasoline, which separates at a very low temperature, followed by diesel, jet fuel, liquefied petroleum gas, and heavy fuel oil. So you may wonder, 
What happens during the process of fractional distillation? Let's break it down into four simple steps. First, crude oil is heated in a boiler and fed into a distillation tower or column. Next, as the temperature of crude oil in the tower rises, the fractions with the lowest boiling point begin to vaporize first and move upward. For example, gasoline, which is also known as petrol, and naphtha, because of their low boiling point, move upwards. Next, fractions with high boiling points, such as foil oil and diesel, as well as kerosene, cool down and condenses at the lower end. And finally, distillation continues until all fractions are separated according to their different boiling points. And finally, distillation continues until all fractions are separated according to their different boiling points. Here's an image that summarizes the fractional distillation process. First, usually crude oil is stored in a reservoir or in an oil well. Then it is sent into the boiler where it is heated to about 370 degrees Celsius. Next, it is fed from the boiler into the distillation column. At this point, different fractions now separate. The fractions with the lowest boiling point settles at the top of the distillation column, such as refinery gas that have a boiling point of 20 degrees Celsius, petrol with a boiling point of 30 degrees Celsius, while the fractions with higher boiling point settles at the bottom of the distillation column. Example include residues, foil oil, and lubricating oil. That's all about the fractional distillation process. It is important to note that these fractions may need to be refined further to remove impurities before the final product is gotten. At the completion of the refining process, common foils and other products can be derived from crude oil. Common examples include a petroleum gas, which is our usual cooking gas. Another example is petrol, which is used for driving petrol engines like that of a car. Next is jet foil for running aircraft, a kerosene for cooking stoves and bush lamps, the diesel oil for running diesel engines, petrochemicals used for producing petrochemical products that we'll find out later, Lubricating oils used for engine oils, grease, and candles. Home heating oil for running heaters in temperate countries. Foil oil for powering generators and marine engines. And asphalt for surfacing roads, as can be found in this image. Now, let's talk about petrochemicals. It is common to associate crude oil with foil alone. But well, petrochemicals are also derived from crude oil. So what are petrochemicals? Petrochemicals are chemical products other than foils obtained from crude oil after refining. The two most common classes of petrochemicals are the olefins and the aromatics. We won't talk much about them, but let's go into the different petrochemical products. Petrochemicals are used for the industrial production of many essential goods, such as plastics, polyesters used for manufacturing textiles, paints, synthetic rubber for door mats, shoes, and soles, fertilizers, weed killers, and pesticides, detergents, and pharmaceuticals. So it is obvious that petrochemicals and crude oil have an important place in our lives. The Nigerian economy have benefited greatly from these products of petrochemical and crude. Let's find out some of the ways the Nigerian economy have benefited so far. 
Some of the ways petroleum and its derivatives have been of importance to Nigeria include 1. In Nigeria, oil is the biggest source of national income. The exports of petroleum and petrochemicals earn much income for the country. Secondly, the oil and gas industry provides employment for her citizens. Thirdly, Petrochemicals provide raw materials for many industries, such as the textile industry, the paint industries, fashion industries, pharmaceuticals, carpets, and other industries. And finally, petroleum provides aviation fuel, petrol, and diesel oil for an efficient transport system. Before we take a summary of what we've learned so far, I would like you to visit a petrol station and do the following. 1. Observe carefully and take note of the different types of fuel sold in the station. Next, observe and record the different types of lubricating oil and grease sold in the station. And finally, observe and record safety measures and notices put in place to prevent fire in the petrol station. Please note, don't go alone. Go with an adult family member or your classroom teacher. That brings us to the end of this class. But before we go, let's take a quick review of what we've learned so far. First, we learned that crude oil or petroleum is a dark brown inflammable liquid substance found deep down the earth's surface or under the sea which is commonly refined into various types of fuel by fractional distillation. Secondly, we learned that the process of searching for oil under the ground or sea is called oil exploration. Thirdly, we learned that petroleum is a mixture of many gaseous, liquid, and solid hydrocarbons. Each of these components has different boiling points. Fourthly, we learned that products obtained from petroleum refining vary. Some of them include kerosene, diesel fuel, fuel oils, and asphalt. Next, we learned that petrochemicals are chemicals derived from petroleum and petroleum gas. And finally, we discovered that petroleum and petrochemicals have many economic uses. They are Nigeria's largest source of income. So, can you remember what we've learned so far? Let's test ourselves with these few questions. Question 1. Oil exploration means the process of Is it A. Refining crude oil B. Collecting crude oil C. Purifying crude oil or D. Searching for crude oil The correct answer is option D. Oil exploration is the process of searching for crude oil. Question 2. Which of the following is not a crude oil fraction? Is it A. Petrol B. Kerosene C. Diesel oil or D. Polythene The correct answer is polythene. Question 3. The following are products of petrochemicals, except, is it A, rubber, B, nylon, C, petrol, or D, paint? The correct answer is petrol. Petrol is not a petrochemical product. And finally, let me leave you with something to reflect on. Take a notebook and try to answer the following questions on your own. 1. Describe fractional distillation. And 2. With examples, explain the term petrochemicals. This brings us to the end of this class. I am confident that by now, 
It can describe the petroleum refining process and list different examples of petroleum products as well as petrochemical products. We'll meet in my next class. Bye for now.